This is episode five of The Union. Everybody, thanks for signing back in and watching this episode. This is uh, going to be a little bit different than, uh, than what we've normally done, just because uh, we don't have a guest, so you get to listen to the five of us boneheads uh, sit around and, and just chat about anything and everything, really. So we've had a couple guests uh, line up and uh, just do to technical difficulties they haven't been able to uh join us so we're gonna we're gonna freewheel it tonight and have some fun so as always do our quick introductions we got mark up in the beautiful ottawa valley we got phil down in oshawa we've got dave kicking it he's removed his his glasses uh, hopefully we'll get him to wear those again dave's up in the bruce peninsula and ryan down in southern nova scotia Boys, um, crazy week. Um, lots. I've got a, a fair amount to talk about, um, but you know, let's let's just keep this rolling with uh, what we were talking about when we when I hit the record here, and that's it. Just seems like every fucking week there's a new gun that's being on the list that that the liberals are trying to take away from us. Uh, you know, Ryan and and Mark, our buddy Maddie. Matty Kazira has just sent me a picture of a Ruger that's that's made the list. At the rate things are going, I think we'll be using sharp pointy sticks oh, to be killing ducks. I don't know, man. You know, when uh when uh Billy Madison came on there and 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 done his, his Twitter update saying, you know, don't worry, shotguns and stuff is all gonna be okay certainly doesn't look that way right now it's only a matter of time i think and and you know they're going to come and try and take everything well i think it's pretty much anything black and scary right or wouldn't yeah. it scary yeah but do you think that they can roll this back like like stop it well do you think that the government what avenue do they have to get us our guns back like this a 22 plinker or something like that isn't an Ivor Johnson one of the ones that was banned? Like, how do you get those back? That's my question. Yeah, uh, I I have no idea. Like, the, I I have no idea what how they plan on doing this. Uh, for one, now, and this is this is the thoughts of Damien. So the way that the current government has spent money over the last year, the buy I don't know where the money is going to come from to even buy back the guns. So like it can all go on a list right now, but is it like, is it affect like once it goes on a list, let's say a gun goes on a list today, is that officially now illegal? Like, are you no longer allowed to use that gun as long as soon as, or is there like six months and then that becomes legislation? Pretty sure once it's prohibited, it's prohibited. Unless it falls into one of those little uh, loopholes where they say like native natives can use them for hunting mm -hmm. for sustenance. Right. And I don't think that just applied to natives. I think if you needed that firearm to provide sustenance for your family, I think it was still there to use right. for two right. years or something. But other than that, yeah, you're not supposed to use them. Yeah. Like if you leave, I guess in this two year period, if you leave your house with said firearm, it's like a no, no. Really? Eh? So no grace period. It's like, it's black and white. It's on the list. No more can you use it. No more. No more pew pew. No more pew no. pew. Wow. So, okay. Here's sorry. one though. What about like uh, some guy way up north with shitty internet connection? How is he supposed to keep up with this? Like we're seeing it. We're getting updates on like all these social media posts, and then we can look it up ourselves. 
But how is this dude in Timbuk fucking two supposed to see that? Well, like, this is just those ridiculous. guys aren't. But those guys aren't being enforced, anyways, right? No, no. But like, is there an ad in the Toronto Star every week? Like, oh, this week Bill Blair's decided this gun too, and yeah. you know, like it, it. This is getting ridiculous. It is getting it is getting ridiculous, and 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 I don't I don't mean to cut you guys off on on the topic, and but what's even more ridiculous is is the amount of gun owners now that's attacking one another. That's what's oh. fucking ridiculous. We are our own worst enemy. One hundred percent. Yep. The liberals are just sitting back laughing at us, it's like. Yeah, like, like we're doing all back. we're we're creating the we're creating the conflict yeah. within us like it's yeah. crazy man yeah i see i've seen on too many facebook forums guys just like and it seems to be like the hunter versus like the target shooter like yeah. you know that that avenue and it's like like boys we're all on the same side here yeah. like what i don't care what you do with your firearm yeah if you want to go plink stuff or if you want to go yeah. uh, put stuff on the table but mm -hmm. Like we're all in this together now and people got to give their head a shake and, and kind of like, you know, join forces here and move forward. Otherwise we're just going to roll over and die. Yep. And, and I think this whole, um, uh, this whole attitude of, of when you're talking to somebody online, like this, like you can belittle someone from your computer screen and, and say nasty words to people and, and, and just like call them down to the dirt and and call them fucking bad names like how how does like if you're trying if i'm going to have a conversation with you and listen i am not an expert on this obviously and i'm looking to get educated the minute that you start swearing and and getting upset i'm i'm lose you're not teaching me nothing i'm not i don't even want to listen to you so how can you consider yourself a credible person or, or a voice for the pro gun platform if you're just belittling people? Like that, you, you just seem like an idiot. Well, there's no shortage of those out there, right? I think uh, in the last week or so, if not longer on Facebook, it, uh, it's definitely uh, shown, its, shown itself and reared its ugly head there with the amount of... Uh, clowns and so forth you know carrying on you know throwing hissy fits on social media and stuff like at the end of the day what are you really accomplishing that, that's true because how much of this debate on facebook is going to make it anywhere that means anything yeah nothing nowhere really that's right well like I, it, until it's like the one numpty that believes that what he reads on Facebook is actually true. Oh, it's and, it's and, gospel, right? Right, and then he goes, and then he goes walking off down, you know, down Bay Street in Toronto, and the cops pull him over and like, what, <laughs> dummy? What are you doing? What, Jimmy on <laughs> fucking Facebook said I could do it. You guys can't take my guns. Yeah, yeah, right. And then the, the worst thing too is like. We've seen a bunch of knuckleheads throwing out like fake news lists and posts and stuff, and like you know, oh, like the Cooey eighty four is now banned. The Ivor Johnson's banned. Like really? Well, like I saw some list the other day, and and one of my friends reached out and like, dude, like what's the deal with this? And I'm like, dude, that's like fake news. Like the eight seventy Express. <laughs> you take it out of the box and it starts to fucking rot. You know what though? You know what it's though? Okay. Like, as a caveat to that, you look at what's on the list. There's like break action single shots and like nothing would surprise me now, right? And I think that's part of the problem is that there's no actual like concrete uh, uh, definition of what is banned and what isn't. It's so very vague because there's such a wide spectrum of like parameters of what the government is deeming you can and can't have. So, I mean, to us, people who are somewhat educated on the topic, at least more than the people who seem to be making this decision, um, it, a lot of it doesn't make sense. Like, it, it does not make, how is a single shot weapon of any kind uh, 
a threat. Like, how, explain, like, explain to me, like, how, how can that be restricted? I have no idea. I'd like to point out that that uh, guy that sent Phil the list was me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the list and the first, it, it talked about the Cooey and I was like, holy fuck, I just sold Phil a Cooey. Like he literally just got Ooh. it a week ago. Two of them. And I was like, <laughs> and that guy over there has the other one. <laughs> I can show Stop it to you. <laughs> Stop the recording. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and here shit. I feel bad. I'm, I'm like, oh jail. man. Shit story, Phil. I'm like feeling bad about it. And Phil's like, fake news, look at the guns on the list. But I look. And it's like the Mossberg five hundred, the like the Remington eight seventy, like it's all the most common guns. Some guy was just being a dick and making this list. So whoever yeah. you are, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> and there is there's a lot of there is a lot of I mean I, you guys are gonna find this shocking, but there's trolls on the internet, right? And there's definitely guys who are on the other side of this fence who are just like, you know, lighting the match, turning to the tank <laughs> of gas, and that, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's that too. Well, and so, and the worst part is, is like there's so much fake news being put out there on social media by these asshats that like people are just going into a fucking tailwind, yeah. and it just it just blows up. Real good segue, Philly into this that I had totally forgot about. So Ontario turkey hunters. Remember the picture of the dude that had to pitch so apparently that was the troll. No doubt. Was that yeah. the guy that shot the shot the double with a hen? So no, no just the one guy that one. had said hadn't heard of the hadn't heard a gobble all since the first day or something. Finally got it done. He's proud as a peacock. Apparently that's that's a troll. So like that that wasn't yeah. even well. Well, in uh, fairness, I think he is a Leaf fan, so he's just not right in the head, anyways. There was that. Uh, that was the that was the leading factor for me. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, then there was. But then there, there was the guys. That's him. Yeah, but then there was the guys. Then there was the guys that had the two birds on the tailgate of the truck, that had said, "Well." Two birds, one shot. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, they, and those guys were just just trying to trying to drum up some action on the page. Well, really, it's it's funny you say that. So I, my dad and I, we were out yesterday uh, yesterday morning turkey hunting because I've been trying so hard to get my dad a bird, and we tried to kind of a new but old property. I haven't turkey hunted it yet, and the farmer's like, "Yeah, go in there, fill your boots." So I'm like, "Dad, that's it." This one property we've been hammering. It's just been a gong show. So we go into this new place. We get in there, 5 o'clock in the morning, boom, birds are fired up. Quarter to six, earliest I've ever seen a turkey die. Quarter to six, we had a flock of like eight jakes come in. And I look over my dad, I'm like, just pick a bird. Because he doesn't care whether he shoots a tom or a jake. And like yeah. I'm sitting there watching these birds, and they're like, they're tight. And I'm like, just, they're 20 yards, but like, fingers crossed, just don't shoot two. Don't shoot. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, so now, now that you brought up the actual, well, I guess I started the turkey hunting conversation, but you actually brought it up about hunting within yourself. I got to talk about the fact that my young fella actually asked me to come hunting. So I ruined my kid with hockey, right? At four years old, I strapped him on a pair of skates, put him out on the ice. Kid was was awesome was an amazing skater just couldn't do anything with the puck and and just just i i put too much pressure on him for hockey and I, and and i ruined him from it so when it came to hunting i was like absolutely not i'm not going to force it on him hopefully he takes up an interest and honestly his buddy lives the next street over his buddy went out with his dad and and got a turkey and i think that's what he was like, oh, Wesley's, Wesley was out hunting with his dad and got a turkey. Here we go. Dad, can I come hunting? Yes, you can. And, buddy, I'm telling you what. He was – I didn't dress him up warm enough. I thought I did, but obviously I didn't. Um, he was a little bit cold, but, he, he, you know, he stuck it out. And But the funny part was there was – at one point I seen this. So I, I'm sitting – I'm sitting, you know – my back on the tree and Cade sitting right next to me. And I could see this skunk, like just, like just making its way towards us. 
And I'm like, oh boy, please no. And and birds are working, right? Like I could I could sort of pick them out in, in the brush, but I know I can't move. Um, and this skunk is coming and, and I'm like, hey, Cade, check it out. Look at the skunk. I was like, do not move. Do not do anything. <laughs> and he's like, what happens if he sprays us? So anyway, so he got through that. Then three hens come in and they're you know 15 meters away and i hear him he's like dad are you gonna shoot or what and i'm like no buddy i can't <laughs> shoot those i can't shoot by this point he was getting cold and he was like all right come on let's get this over with so we can get going and get home but uh he stuck it out he was a champ about it um when the tom came in and i actually got a shot off he was pretty excited to get over there and and lift them up and and stuff so all in all, uh, a fabulous, fabulous hunt. We were uh, we were catching the seven thirty ferry back across from from Wolf Island. Nice. So it was uh, it was very nice. Good. Yeah, very good hunt. Mark, you were out today. Well, first, I just want to oh. say like, it's a good thing you got one, Damien, because if you took that ferry ride home later without a bird, yeah, he'd be asking the whole way home. Well, you know, Wesley's dad got a bird. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I'd been like. Welcome to hunting with your dad. Yeah. Lots of days where I come home empty-handed. Beautiful sunrise pictures. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to do both. So that way, at times, you do put up a sunrise because you didn't get anything. It doesn't look out of place. Right. <laughs> right. Mark, yeah, you so picked out, eh? Yeah, I did this morning. So that uh, fucking Tom that I've been chasing all week. Probably for I've seen him on the property now for three weeks, and uh, anyway, so yesterday I went out and I set up and I said I know generally where he is, so I'm gonna set up. I put out a I made a mistake putting out hen decoys, because when the hen came up to the field with him, she didn't want anything to do with those decoys. She completely avoided them, headed over the ridge. He followed her up to the ridge. She turned around, got down. He got on, and right where the sun came up, he gave it to her. And that's all I could see. <laughs> was this Tom giving it to this hen? Like and then turkey, she turkey porn? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, silhouette, <laughs> silhouette turkey porn. Is is we it don't... weird? Is it weird that I'm curious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm this Ron is or this Tom is now known as Ron Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she hopped up and took off straight away. And I said, now's my chance. So I gave a call. He hopped up and he started strutting. And then he, then he looked down the field. He gobbled and ran down the field. And then I could hear all the purring and, and cutting of him fighting with the Jakes. So later on, when I got up and walked around the field, he was about as far away in the field as he could have got. So he's probably about almost a kilometer from me. And the four Jakes were standing pretty well where he went running to so they chased him off again so i swore a little and went home and said maybe i can uh maybe i can go again today and see what happens so i went to the exact same spot now i didn't know if he was going to be back around and set up again in the trees so i set up and no decoys this time i talked to you guys about it it's, it was probably the best course of action i could try now because decoys weren't working and uh, so I set up, no birds near me until 6.45. I could hear all the gobbling down further away from me. But anyway, this uh, four jakes came from 10 feet away around the pile. And I'm not using a blind or nothing. I'm just sitting against in, in my chair against a pile of wood. And the four jakes came out and started eating right in front of me. And then they started walking away, kind of. And then while they're there, a hen came over the hill towards me then two jakes came over the hill towards me and they're all down around me i'm thinking all right this is the jake show again another hand comes another hand comes and then i hear a gobble and then i start seeing his head just over the ridge about 125 yards away he started coming in towards the last hand who was halfway up the hill and he essentially made his way right to her she started going up the hill to leave the jakes by now had already started to, to depart and leave for the trees so i started calling and he turned and did a 360 and started 
gobbling and strutting. So I called, he'd do the same thing, and this went on for a good solid 10 minutes. While this was happening, another Tom showed up around the turn on the ridge. I was thinking, well, this is way better than I was expecting. And uh, he came in, it took 10 minutes to get him to go 40 yards, and he was sitting at about 25. He turned around and faced the other Tom. He did a gobble at him and then stuck his head up and bang, down he went. And uh, he was so good. It was such a good shot. Oh, here we go. That this this uh -oh. will be good. Uh -oh. He's a so modest funny. man. <laughs> Visual aids. Look at that. Yeah. So. Yeah, get that. There you go. Awesome. 10 pounds of meat. And that was a hell of a picture you took too, right? <laughs> How many tries? Phil it took Phil seven, didn't it? Yeah, Four. I think rough, roughly about Four? that. Four. Four. Oh, boy. Well, here, here's the funny part. So, Dad gets his Jake, and we toughed her out for probably another hour, hour and a half. There was a Tom out there. He was out there dicking around and whatever. And finally, uh, we called her quits because we Dad and I had some uh, some wood to go pick up and stuff. So we marched back to the truck, and there was a nice, beautiful. Uh, I think it was probably a buckthorn tree next to a like, like old fence post. I'm like, oh, this is a money, money shot, like for a background, do a photo with dad. So we're walking back to the truck and we're like literally like 50 yards from the truck where this tree is. I'm like, dad, leave the bird here. We're gonna do the photos here and stuff. So I go get the camera, we come back, try, <laughs> trying to get my dad to pose with this bird. Ah, you know what, fuck it, dad. Just kneel down, fan it out, fuck, that's good enough. <laughs> oh, it was such a fight. I'm like, I do this better on my own. That must be so frustrating as an artist like yourself, Phil, to, to mm -hmm. find the, the proper Art backdrop yeah. and then to have your yeah, and then to have your yeah, model yes. not cooperate with you. It must be so frustrating. Phil is out there in the middle of a cut cornfield with a high turtle neck <laughs> and a black right? like, Move over. Move yeah. over. Kick, Chow kick there. Shout out. <laughs> Kicking corn stalks out of frustration. Yeah. Good job, Dad. Mm -hmm. Shut a bird. D didn't miss. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But yeah, he was happy. He was prouder than a peacock. He, was, he got one. So there's only Jake, but he doesn't care. They all look the same in the in the, the oven, right? So better eating. That's what he says, and I agree. Yeah. Well, I took uh, I took one of the breasts off that one I I shot last week, and then uh, and uh, I cut it up. I you know I, I cut it up into strips, rolled it in chicken batter, and then actor fried it. So not deep fried, like tried the actor fry. Don't do it, boys. <laughs> you buggered it up, didn't you? Well, it, it just way. it just it sucked every bit of moisture out of you know what I mean. Like it was. Uh. It was it was hard. It was but tough. It just that, uh, that Tom that I shot a couple of weeks ago. We uh, we took uh, one of the breasts up the other day. Dana like did it in the oven. Took the breast and basically put it on like a bed of stuffing in like a ceramic pot, whatever. And it was it was pretty good. You just got to add know. some. You got to get some fat to it, right? That's the trick, I think. Bacon, like, bacon, yeah. Bacon. Lots of so, bacon. Tomorrow. Bacon. Go ahead, Ron. Someone? No. Uh, tomorrow, Josette's taking a full full one breast side. Yeah, she's gonna split it, stuff it, wrap it in bacon, mm -hmm. and bake it in the oven. There you go. So tomorrow, I'm gonna tomorrow I'm gonna punch my second tag. <laughs> you know it. You no know decoys. It. That's it, buddy. <laughs> no. okay. On honestly, Mark, I have killed ninety percent of my birds over no decoys. Okay. Like my my the Jake the dad shot yesterday, I had two hens and a Jake out. It was like you know a swarm of like seven or eight Jakes there in there to put the boots to them or whatever. And, but yeah, tomorrow's gonna be no decoys. That's ah. it. What's your favorite recipe for the turkey there, bud? Ooh. Oh, Bill, he was just talking. Um, <laughs> I I've done done it all, man. Like I've taken uh, I've plucked birds, roasted them, you know, like a butterball. The only problem, like say, you know, trying to do like a butterball, you know, they're not pumped full of crap, pumped full of chemicals, steroids, antibiotics, water, all this other shit. 
So you got to bake and wrap them, do whatever. Um, th that's been quite good. Um, I've done a lot of, like you said, breasting them out and uh, to just bake the breast or bar I've done barbecued breast. Just throw the whole slab right on the barbie, a little season, a little barbecue sauce. The biggest thing is don't overcook it, right? Because, mm. you know, it's going to our feet. Turkey gumbo. Yeah. Turkey gumbo. Just listed them all. <laughs> Fried turkey. You guys <laughs> ever use, uh, <laughs> you ever use buttermilk to marinate your breasts beforehand? No. Negative. So, try it. Buttermilk. Sit it. It only needs to be in it for a half hour, 45 minutes. And then if you're going to do uh, like strips, roll it in mayo and then put your batter on it, like shake and bake type batter. A panko breadcrumbs. Panko breadcrumbs with whatever spices you like. Fish crisps. Throw, throw it in your fish crisps. Oh, yeah. I've, okay. Yeah. I've yeah, had yeah. it with fish crisps. It's really, really fucking good, man. Okay. Deep fried. Yeah. With fish crisps. It's just yeah. pre-seasoned bread thing. This <laughs> same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's no different. D different flavors. Yeah. Just, I've done it with ducks a lot. Yeah. yeah. Right with the turkey. Hey, let's Works talk too. more about ducks. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. I like ducks. Are we Punisher right. waterfowl? Yeah. Let's talk more about <laughs> ducks. Talk about Fuck ducks. turkeys. <laughs> Punisher turkey. Yeah. yeah. Fuck turkeys. The only turkeys is the five of us sitting here. Yeah, it's true. True enough. Um, favorite bird to hunt? Big fat greenheads. Allards, bro. Mallards. All about the mallards. Big fat greenheads. Mallards and blacks. Yeah. Blacks are fun. Woodies. Woodies are good too, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I love my small water shoots. Mm -hmm. or, having, or having 50. Having fifty teal scream over your head—that's really you'd, have to, you'd have to shoot all fifty just to get a meal. <laughs> Still sound sounds like a fucking F eighteen flying over your head when there's fifty of them. Yeah, that or know. ringnecks, man. Ringnecks are like that too. Yeah. Ringers are good, yeah. They're heavy little ringers. birds. Ringer, yeah. Ringers are like like people knock divers so much, right? Oh, they're fish ducks. They're fish ducks. They're not all fish ducks. No, only the lawn darts are fish ducks. That's right. And old squaw. But for like for those that don't know, like ringers are like in comparison to puddlers, ringers are like teal or woodies. They're like the small water marsh diver. They eat the yeah. same shit. Same bird. They just look different. But they eat just as well as like a teal or a woody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think we need it's our job to stop discriminating between puddlers and divers. Because they're all ducks under. No, 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 no. What the fuck are you guys talking about? This is the new on darts. <laughs> oh, okay. The answers are different, but. but yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Phil. Uh, I'm with you, like ringnecks and same. They're good. They're good. Cans? Canvas backs? Oh. I've never eaten a can oh, and I've well. never shot and shot. Oh, yeah. Shot and? I've never shot in a can. Shooting. 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 Shoot them. Burn shooting. Yeah, cans. I've had cans. Cans are delicious, man. Like, oh, it's next level. If you open a can, the food inside's even better. I see what Put it on the phone. Yeah, dad joke of the week. Thank you. <laughs> um so maybe this uh, this could be a, a half decent opportunity to talk about uh, some of the plans that uh, for the fall that's that's just starting to uh, rule out now, Dave, and and just uh, the three camps that that you're thinking about putting together, and and I know it's by no means anywhere um, a finalized product or anything like that, but did you want to talk a little bit just on on three? the three events that uh, that we're going to try and, and put off this fall? Yeah, um, so this year we have three camps planned. We have our general open open camp that we do every single year, like right around the week before deer season. Um, it's looking like that's probably going to be in Kingston again. Um, we're planning to do a ladies camp, um, and we'll talk more about that. and maybe joining up with one of the ladies organizations out there on a future podcast here. 
And then uh, I think this year we're looking at doing a veterans first responders camp, which is a pretty big, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the veterans first responders. Um, I think it's going to be a good time and, and just not, not that any of the other camps are any different, but this one, uh, obviously for, for majority of us here, it, uh, it, it close know, to the heart. Yeah. So, uh, so it'd be pretty cool. So, yeah. So just for everybody that's listening, just pay attention to our, our social media. And, and as we get some more firmed up details, we'll, well, Dave will put them out and, and get it all out there and, and start the process of, of building on that and getting that list of names and, and everybody. And, uh, as always, you know, it's, it's a, it's a hell of a time and, and some good friends made. So, uh, so an amazing event, but, um, no, no, everything's based on like what's going to come open coming up. Right. Yeah. Um, with the way things like, I don't know if you heard him talk about Doug Ford today, talking about how he might shut things back down and there'll be like an ape on the, on the nurse's back or whatever he said there. But yeah, um, it looks like things are going to be open back up for the fall. So I think we should be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I I hope things and and I think that you know, so so here in Kingston we had I think it was nine days of of no cases whatsoever, or no new cases, and then uh, some kid left Kingston for the week weekend and went down to Toronto and hung out and whatever he was doing, licking lamp posts or whatever down there and. He came back and and he's he's quarantined now. He's got he's got COVID and and I guess he had been in contact with a fair number of people in the city before he got his test done. And so we could be um, we could be getting back up there again, right? So we're we're nowhere near. I don't think being back to a hundred percent operational. Um, but I, I do think that we will be we will be good. It just it's going to take a, a little bit more time, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. Go. Oh, thanks, Dave. And like you said, even to that, like, um, you know, with our foreseeable future, and, and for those that follow me and know that I run Timber Oak Outfitters, you know, I got, you know, no little, big deal. No. Yeah. Little, little, sm little small time <laughs> operation. Um, Not a big I'm, deal. No. I'm even on the fence right now if i'm going to be running hunts this fall like it's going to be yeah, that's a good question it's going to be a last minute decision like and in fairness like you know at the end of the day you know they're, they're just birds right it's not worth you know anyone's life over you know like, have I'll anybody been calling you philly like the, to start not, not yet and i haven't i haven't like in for those that follow me on facebook like my my page like you know like i haven't you know been pushing a whole lot of things you know i've been sharing the the videos and some other stuff, you know, companies I represent and this and that. But um, as for dates and stuff, like I was seriously thinking about uh, putting together a field spread this fall. Like I was going to get a trailer and 10 dozen full bodies. And even like with our dollar, it's tanked. Um, like, I don't know. Like it, it's going to be last minute. Um, not, you know, I don't trust anyone out there. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I think it might just be friends and family hunts, you know, this fall right you know maybe focus just just one season right it's not the end of the day oh absolutely you know, maybe uh just you know maybe spend a little bit more time focusing on getting buddies out that you know i haven't been able to hunt with like you know you guys except ryan ryan's too far but, too uh, far i still mm -hmm. love you buddy but it's too far i got you but there was, we'll uh, you there, was we'll there was a full rate there was a full rate for sale last week i don't know if he sold it just outside of ottawa um yeah was it uh brandon yeah ross? brandon ross brandon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was actually talking to Brandon, but uh, yeah, his his trailer was a little too big for what I'm looking for. Okay, I was talking to him. Yeah, and even uh, Dale Frost. Dale Frost is a buddy of mine. He lives down here in Curtis, just down the road from my house, and uh, he had a nice rig for sale. But uh, you know, the, the trailer was tempting, but there's no point in buying a trailer if I'm not going to fill it full of decoys because of the dollar rate. Right? So I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, are, and I can find another one. Like I got a, uh, I got a buddy, Jason Sear. Like Jason, mm -hmm. Jason's got a boat down in, down in where is it? Down in Tennessee, I think. Georgia. Down in Georgia. New one? Yeah, he's got a new one. He just America. he can't get down the like he can't get down there to get it. 
Well, buddy, you get another yeah. another did, Excel or no, buddy? You should see yeah. this thing. Pro- Prodigy. Yeah. What is it? Prodigy. Prodigy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh really, buddy? This thing is sick. Slicker oh. than whale oh, shit, buddy. Oh, I know what a Prodigy is. But th- this is the. Uh, uh, he told me what the name of the hull was. Like, Aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Hey, as my as my dad said, better to be a smart ass than a dumb ass. <laughs> yeah, you whatever that. you want. <laughs> but yeah, like so, like the dollars affecting everything, man. Like he's got his yeah. boat. His boat is down there. Um, not only is he gonna get gonna get bent over when he's got to pay for the boat, but he can't even get across the border to drive down and pick yeah. it up. That sucks. Well, even um, my buddy uh, Jordan Stone yep. from Sheetwater Kennels, that you know, him and I got a little you know, thing going. You know, name drop, we, no big deal. Yeah, we make some brown dogs, two eaters. Anyways, um, <laughs> he's got a new puppy coming. <laughs> it's in the it's in South Dakota. Yeah, and it's still in South Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> it's ain't going nowhere. Boats and dogs are essential travel in my mind. The border oh, is open I'm, for essential, right? Well, in fairness. Dogs are essential. I agree. Right? Essentially, they're essential. Yep. No? I should have a pup by now, but I know I don't. So yeah. I know where you can get a good brown dog. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't I'll pass on it. No <laughs> brown female. Don't, don't dabble don't dabble in the brown dogs. Yeah. I got two for crying out loud. What the hell was I thinking? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no one idea. one turned out okay. Oh, the the jury's still out on the other one. You haven't seen the other one in a little while. I haven't so. seen the other one since April first. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Someone else's problem at the moment. Yeah. So Phil, would you fill that? What kind of decoys did you go with? All skinnies or what? Uh, I've got, uh, I've got seven dozen skinnies. I got three dozen dive bombs, and I was going to get ten dozen full bodies from Tangle. But and Mark a lot Vich. of silos. Mark Vich loves the silos. Oh, does he ever? But oh, I was going to uh, eat my cracker and not see anything. <laughs> I've been talking. That cracker uh, kind of reminds of a silo. Talking to your buddy there, uh, Jordan Lemay, there, Damien. Yeah. And he was uh, grateful enough to, you know, loan out his garage for me if I was going to do the order. But like, right. So with, uh, with the dollar, who knows? Yeah, like you bring up that idea, you bring up that topic about uh, skinnies and silhouettes and stuff. You know, I I watched or I read a post on Facebook the other day from, you know, from a good friend of a lot of ours, and that's Perry Blanky. And, you know, like he, he, that's all he hunts over, man. And they and, and they, they put down a pile of birds. A pile of birds all season long, and that's all they hunt over, man. They do not hunt over anything else. Real mm-hmm. geese for him, yeah. Yeah, and he, yeah. Yeah, and, and he do, man. And he, he done it, and it was a pretty good article, you know, or a pretty good write-up that he's done. And, and yeah, he puts down a lot of birds. I'm like, and that's I've, all he hunts I've, over. I've, I've been fortunate enough to go out and, uh, and hunt with Ryan Campbell. Yeah, and Ryan's a, a big advocate of uh, the real geese, mm-hmm. and I went and hunted uh, with Ryan a couple of years ago. We did a cut corn, cut cornfield shoot, ten dozen RGs, and we smacked our birds in like no time. Yep. Ryan out west, do you guys use them at all out west? We have them, but <clears throat> I mean, we don't we don't use just solely them. We we were mostly yeah. rolling with full bodies, right? Yeah. Um, so and then and then socks for for snows right yeah but we have socks for every species too so oh, yeah. and if it's a walk-in like we can't get permission to run the trailer and then we'll just go with the sock spread whether it's ducks or specks or darkies whatever yeah so yeah so depends on the situation but uh i mean silos work so you can kill them all over the, um, in some situation it doesn't i mean you know what? If you if you do your scouting properly, man, you can kill you can kill birds with anything in the field. But if you, I wouldn't run I wouldn't run silos on a traffic hunt, maybe. But no. uh, but you know if you if you do your homework and you know where the birds are going to be, you could kill them over duck decoys if you want. Like 
it's right. not going to matter. So down there's, there's Maryland, more to it than just what you're throwing in, throwing in the field. Yeah. Down in Maryland, they use tires. Yep. <laughs> Cut a tire in half and fold it inside out. Yeah. But they're only allowed one bird a day now, right? Yep. They're, yep. Like they're they're that flyway, like Ryan, you you guys never see like I remember when we were down down your way a couple of years ago, like your your old man was so excited when there were some geese in there, like he could care less about remember that, Mark? Yep. Like <laughs> all these blacks and mallards that were flying away around and we're so so horny to get on them. And here's Ryan's dad who's like, where's those geese? There was like five of them. Like, just like <laughs> waste them. I've shot like, we shot like hundreds of geese this year. I don't want to shoot any more geese. I can't <laughs> shoot us. And it's funny you mentioned that, Damien, like down in Maryland, like one bird limit. Yet out here where I hunt, early season, late season, it's 10 birds. Yeah. And you could shoot 10 birds every day, all day. Yep. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. Here's something that I, I did read the other day. Um, and I, I remember reading about it, the same topic a couple of years ago that they were thinking about doing it, but bylaw officers for certain cities that are going around and, and destroying nests and eggs of geese. Have you, have you guys heard about, it? so it is down, I, I want to say Toronto, but it's not Toronto. It's one of the, it's somewhere in the GTA. And, uh, and yeah, 100%, like the bylaw officer is going around and he's destroying nests and eggs because they've become that big of a nuisance bird. But Probably yet, Oshawa, they're pretty snobby over there. <laughs> but yet, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how many times someone go, says to me, you shoot Canada geese, they're well, endangered. They're, they're protected. And they're That's not their national can bird. It's Canada's it's national, bird. national <laughs> bird. You shoot Canadian geese? No, I just shoot the American ones. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, that's, my, yeah, that's my favorite episode of Letter Kenny. <laughs> the, <Yeah>. majestic. <laughs> the majestic. The majestic. There was, uh, yeah. there was one thing uh, I read today, and it was uh, which bird is tougher, the Canadian loony or the American eagle? And it showed the loony, and, and the loon actually came out of the water and, his be and like drove its beak right through the heart of the eagle and killed it, like just like that. Girl, bam! Just ninja <laughs> strike. Just. Somebody play like Bon Jovi shot through the heart all of a sudden. <laughs> that would have been pretty fitting. Well, it's funny you say that. There's that, that meme going around with the can with the uh, the bald eagle standing on top of the can of goose picking it out like it's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it was can of geese that took down that big Boeing over in like New York City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. No big deal. Check mark. Yeah. Game over tilt. Cool. Well, hey, uh, oh, no, go for a Merc. There was a lull in the battle. Yep. <laughs> Dave. Can't have white space. Yeah. You had mentioned uh, the boat launches. Yeah, boat launches are back open, boys. Mm -hmm. Even the ones locally to me. They were closed a little longer than the other ones. But, yeah, boat launches are open. Nice. So. Anybody been on the water yet? No. I will be, I will oh, be oh. this week coming. This guy. I clean my boat. <laughs> so it wasn't my boat. I'm kind of in the same situation as Jason Sear with his boat where I need some parts from Mud Buddy, but with the Canadian dollar and the border closed, I don't want to go down and get them yet. Oh, so yeah. My boat's on the side burner for about. Yeah. yeah. Just go uh, yeah. get a little, get a little 20 tiller and throw it on the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I dropped my boat off to Jason just so he could do all the maintenance on, on the motor. Um, clean the valves and everything and get her all done so he just sent me a picture just before we uh, started recording so he got the boat all ready and he'll drop her off tomorrow evening oh, and remember after he goes fishing <laughs> yeah probably yeah, yeah, yeah. probably well, i might have to go take her for a little run to make sure this, this is why i'm glad i just run a regular outboard motor yeah they are they are very like they are maintenance maintenance yeah. things right like they are it, it's the fuck, man! It's a snowblower engine. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, there's, there's no, yeah, a big one, but you know what I mean. Like, it's they are, they are very maintenance heavy, and and I'm not, like, that's not a, a fun, that's not a fun day for me. Grease and nipples. Mm, actually, way to tick. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Like, I, I'm not into fucking cleaning valves and yeah. shit like that so 
Jason loves it, so I ask him to do it every year, and he does it. Hell of a taxidermist, too. Oh, is he ever? So much so that he's he's only doing it for friends now because he's just so yeah he's just so busy, man. I've got a bird here. Stand by. White drop. Mm. I've got a bird. He says. So if people are listening to the actual podcast version, they won't even see what he's going to show us, right? That's right. Oh yeah, <laughs> which is right. Yeah. So so that's here. good. That's we're, good. We're back is, in. Dave, do yeah. you have an update on that? Yeah, it should be all up this weekend. Should be finished. Look at that. So for the people watching, listening to this on the podcast, he's showing an upside down. Looks like a dead mount. It is a dead fall done by yeah. Jason. Done by Jason, and it's beautiful. Hold on. Wow. I can. It's still sitting on the uh, sheet of plywood he gave it to me on. Yeah. Like two years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, you didn't shoot that in Long Point last year. No, I shot a redhead. Yeah. That he didn't want to. He's like, Phil, like, I, I was the stat. And you can even ask Marco. Yeah. Because Marco was beside me when I shot this redhead. And, like, I was just, oh, like, almost in tears. So, it's like, so happy. I finally got a redhead, which is a static. Took pictures in the boat. I sent it to Jason. Jason, look at this bird. He's like, yeah, it's like a juvie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are, are you serious, Clark? <laughs> yeah. Oh, crushed my hopes and dreams, that bastard. I still yeah. love him, but we're oh. hoping uh, we're hoping to get him on here uh, one day too, once he clears up his schedule and uh, can uh, devote some time. I think you posted that to the group chat, Phil. You were flexing like, "Oh, look at this!" Hey. Jason, what do you think? You think this is a good mountain? Yeah. And then, like, the whole group sees him. Uh, buddy, I think you can do better. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I could look yeah. back and see. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Ryan Lock, and then Ryan Lockwood puts up this stud of a cotton top. Oh, like, just yeah. a yeah. beauty of a bird, right? So, but, uh, but That's what we need to get a taxidermist on here for, is to talk about, like, you know what? You got to trust them when they tell you. Yeah. Unless yeah. there's a good story behind it. Phil, you shoot a lot of birds, you're going to get a better one than that, right? Mm-hmm. I've shot um, one redhead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, still got, I still got that, uh, that Drake Mallard in the freezer from when we were down in that, uh, into that little honey hole there, Ryan and Merck. Which one, that, the flooded corn or the dead man's pond? Dead man's. The one, yeah. remember that one where when I shot it, and it must have been just that one bead. The, gold, the golden BB. The golden, golden BB. Pellet. Yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, that's the one. I, sh- I still got I, it in the freezer. I shot an ice drake that day that was not going to make it to the wall. If you remember <laughs> correctly, I do. Yeah, yeah. like Frankenstein. You could have Frankenstein. Get away. That. Yeah, he did. What's that? He didn't get away. No, no. I shot him at seven yards and I hit him right square. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Like it was seven, maybe ten yards at the max. Like. I think pretty sure the shot was still in the wall. I'd want to make contact. Boys, anybody know how long we've been on for? Yeah, 40 minutes. 40 That's minutes? That's like, oh. do you guys remember the first Punisher camp? Damien, were you with us when we are in that cornfield and Sheldon's guiding for us? And we're all standing there and, fuck, I forget what kind of duck it was, but it's, it's just overhead. And we're all waiting for Sheldon to, to call it. And he finally says, shoot him. So yeah. I shoot. And right at the same time, there had to be four or five of us shoot all the same fucking bird. And the of thing course. just went like a ping pong. And it's like, oh, fuck. But <laughs> luckily, <laughs> yeah. that was the same day that we got the pintail. And Sheldon right away picks up the phone and calls, uh, calls, calls. Peter Heathfield. Yeah, we got a pintail. Fuck your pintail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember like 10 years ago, I was doing a, a field shoot in uh, Cut Corn. And we had a small flock of mallards come in and they work. They, and like bigger flocks come, right? So my like, guys, leave them, leave them, leave them. So the small flock, they come in and they land. My buddy Nick is beside me. He had a mallard, two mallards, picking corn off of his blind as the other flock was working. So and so he was right very beside me to my right. And I can peer over the, out of the corner of my eye. And I'm, I can see like the one green head on his shoulder picking corn. The other green head picking corn off of his toes. The other flock works in. All right, take them. The birds jump up. Well, I shot. I shot the one that lifted off from his toes. Never found it. Nope. Just 
Cloud of Feathers. Yeah. Coyote what bait. What uh, what do you shoot ducks with? Number fours. Uh, I pretty much just run twos. For the most part, and then I'll run BBs for geese come late season. Yeah, I'm 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 usually number twos the whole way, but then late season I'll I'll go down to BB for uh, late season geese if I'm going after geese. But if I'm staying at ducks all the whole time, I'll just number twos. Yeah. Or if I feel fancy, I'll run the bismuth. What's that, I, uh, eighty dollars a box now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, find, I find uh, putting. I find putting loonies. Fifty-four. Oh, I've seen a box of it two days ago for eighty dollars. Yeah, that was nuts. Canadian folks, Canadian. Canadian. That's Dave's guy. Do the maths. Yeah. We lost yeah. Dave. He yeah. gone. We lost Those a good man. Hey, there. you see that? Sh you see the shirt? Where? Where? Yeah, I've seen it. You can you can do that too. There you go. Uh, <laughs> it's weird. Saint so beer. Beer. <laughs> Drink beer. Save ducks. Where'd Dave go? I don't know. Dave, just me. He's uh, up in the Bruce Peninsula. The, pro the nuclear power plant probably had a. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. Look, look, look out your window for a mushroom cloud. Yeah. <laughs> the goggles, they do nothing. My eyes are burning. <laughs> if you see me disappear next, you know what's going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Darlington, Up Adam yeah. Fallout Boy. <laughs> Good Lord. Up in Adam. All right. <laughs> well, All right. Yeah. Doing any spring scouting? No. Nothing. Actually, no, there's a couple of wheat fields that got planted already, so. Yeah. On Jerry's. Jerry's property, so see what happens with that but a lot of the cornfields haven't even been tilled over yet so but it should be soon because it hasn't been that wet here so yeah i think i think almost everything is planted here yeah pretty well everything i was yeah i was talking to some of my farmers yesterday and the day before and it looks like i'm gonna have a lot of beans a lot of beans this fall and then once those beans get cut it's gonna be straight into wheat so nothing wrong with that no nope. yeah give me wheat and corn yeah. Farmers say, "Hey, we got wheat. Geese get in there. You kill every last single one of them." Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You won't go wrong. You won't go wrong, dear. The only thing with what is it with bean? Like you can't you can't drive in on a bean field, right? If it's cut on a cut bean field, you can. Yeah. Cut beans, but, yeah. But like after like alf, someone told me like after there's alf, like alfalfa and beans around, like you can't like if there's corn around, you can still drive in around there and stuff. But, after it's cut? Yeah, after it's cut. Yeah, but, but it's been uh, cut. Yeah, it's a free for even bean can, field. You but drive on geese. Yeah. Someone told me alfalfa and beans you can't. Alfalfa geese. maybe not because it comes back. Okay. Yeah, they might not want, yeah, it's they continuously might not growing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like your grass. Yeah. Okay. But, but beans, but like, beans, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, once yeah. beans yeah. are cut, it's a, it's a free for all. But it's just. It's like any other crop. It's going to be tilled and reseeded at that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but geese geese won't land in a standing bean field, even though how short it is. I barely no. ever see geese in a cut bean field. Really? Yeah. We see them a lot around way. here. Up this way, you don't see them. No. They'll, they'll, you'll see geese like late season, like like when there's snow on the ground, because you don't get like the drifts in the bean field, so it's easier for them to sift through it. That's the only time you can really actively hunt a bean field that I've seen. Like really? soybean. And they actually, the, the beans have a higher protein content than corn do. It's more, more yeah. fuel. Turkeys love them. We're not talking about turkeys. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Turkey waterfowl. <laughs> Turkey waterfowl. Wasn't it last year that the corn came off late? Mm hmm. So there was a few bean fields last year. Yeah, because everything year? was saturated last year, right? The grass. Last yeah, last year was a mess. Yeah. And then the year before that was the drought, right? Didn't we have the drought in, in Ontario the year before? I think we're having a drought right now. Oh, we yeah. had rain yeah. once in the last month. Holy Jesus, not down in Kingston. We've yeah, had maybe no. three weeks for sure. <laughs> oh no, we're just seeing our first. Fuck, we had snow last week in here. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Dry as a popcorn fryer here, man. <laughs> That's pretty fucking dry. <laughs> Especially with Mercs. Popcorn fart. Mm. That's oh. pretty. That's pretty dry. That's bad. Well, Damien, I'm gonna ship that call back to you this week. By the way. Okay. Thank you, sir. I got. I got to send my vortexes out to uh, Vortex Canada to get them repaired. So. Get unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable warrant. Unbelievable yeah. warranty. Big time. And the, and the service man. So I sent. Uh, I kind of had a little bit of a fall, and my binoculars fell out. Yeah. They, I had to send them back, and then I sent my spotting scope back at the same time. And they both went to different departments, but the person that received them sent me an email, and they kept updating me. Like, Vortex runs a good little tight ship there. My buddy That's sent – yeah, my buddy sent his Diamondbacks in for repair. He sent, like, the Gen 1s, and it was just a simple repair. I can't remember what it was. And they sent him back a new pair of Gen 2s. Like, they could have easily fixed. I think it was just, like, the eye cup or something. They're like, ah, whatever. And they sent him back a brand really? new set of Gen 2s. Didn't, yeah, didn't Marion like, have, a, have a problem with his and sent it? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah I, was, I was with him on that hunt. We were, like, uh, we, there was three of us in the boat. And we were just, you know, putting the blind up, throwing decoys up. It's just a 14-foot aluminum, three guys. So we're jumping around, like, and one of us, someone, we don't know who, had stepped on his blind bag and crushed his, his binoculars. And, uh, yeah, sent it back. He had got, I think, within three, four weeks, got it back. Good to go. So, yep. so yeah. Crazy. They're my, they're my money makers. I need them for what I was doing at West. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. They're pretty good glass. Well, so fellas, with that. that uh, yeah, oh. his dog chewed them. Oh really? Uh, my oh, internet's bad. Really? You probably no, no, go for it. No, you You're... probably. Jeez. No, just go on. <laughs> that... My internet's down, man. It's... He's Fuck. all cut. He's cutting in and out. His head isn't even moving. Power Power it never does. The nuclear plant. Yeah. Okay, fellas. Uh, with that, we'll uh, we'll probably end her here. But uh, for for all of you uh, that are watching or listening on the podcast um this is exactly what the union is um we are five friends uh and we use our time here to sit back shoot the shit and talk to one another uh, talk to you the same as if you were in the room with us um you are not going to get an epiphany watching us and you are not going to find <laughs> the secret to longevity by watching the union, but you will have a laugh and you may just learn a few things. Um, so stick with us. Um, next episode, episode six, very, very excited um, that uh, Mr. Rusty here on from here on game calls will be here. I don't want to say it, but I'm going to probably one of the best um, callers in Canada. And uh, and certainly holding his own down and down south of the border as well. So um, he's going to be with us on the next episode. So uh, please continue uh, to watch. Send us uh, any comments on what you'd uh, like to see changed, or if you want us to just stay the same, let us know. Chances are we're probably going to stay the same. We're probably not going to change. But um, just to let you know. Big love, so everybody. Delicious. Boys, thanks again for uh, for doing this, and uh, until next time, take care, everybody.